Hey everybody, it's Hawk here with another deck profile. Um, we'll start today with the skill, which will tell you everything you need to know about the deck. Heavy Metal Raiders. I so rarely see anybody actually running this, largely because of the massive downside of the fact that playing this requires you to f uh, forfeit one card from your opening hand, which sucks as we all know. But I did play this and it worked out okay in testing. Uh, it did require a bit of um, non-intuitive changes to make it function, but worked pretty well. So, starting off, three Dekoichi the Battle Chanted Locomotives, because it's a big dark machine and it flips face up to give you cards, which is great. Other than that, he doesn't serve much purpose, but hey, that's good enough. Troll Blast Sphere, because it's Blast Sphere, and it's a machine deck. Screw it. Worst case scenario, you just slap him down as a 1400 and somebody has to punch him, which they don't want to do. Triple Barrel Dragon, to the absolute shock of no one. This is your boss monster. When Blast Sphere detonates itself, you get to special summon Barrel Dragon out of your hand, which is great. Uh, I can honestly state that that thing's ability to just start blowing up cards is amazing. And no, you don't need Lucky Day. Uh, honestly, you don't. It's fine. Works totally fine without it. I honestly get more destructions than I fail at, so I'm fine with that. On top of that, he's a 2600 beater, which is awesome. Now this is where things get a little weird. Two Apprentice Magicians, because they combo with Magician of Fate. Faith. Why? Because people are going to blow this thing up. It's inevitably going to happen, and when it happened, my deck got shut down. Then my opponent recommended that I should probably run Double Apprentice Magician with Magician of Faith, and I went, wait a minute, I'm an idiot, why didn't I do that? Because this is a field spell, when it dies, you can put it back in your hand. Even though it's a skill, you just can't put skill cards back into your deck, because they were never in your deck in the first place. This thing can go to your hand, though, so you can just replay it. That's what she's for. Now, to continue this, you've won Magical Undertaker. Now, you could just run two Magician to Faith. That's totally fine, if you want. He's just there for a little more versatility, because he can either get you her, or another one of these, and you can stall for a bit if you need to stall. One Crystal Seer, she's just there to draw more cards. That's it. She's there to assist your plays. Now, that is the monsters, and if you notice, this is a very monster-heavy deck. Obviously, if this deck is focused around beating your opponent into the dirt with a bunch of giant uh, machines. Now, spells. Two half shots. Why half shot? Well, either A, it's going to save your rear end from getting uh, obliterated by something big and scary, or, and this is what I was doing with it, I would hit my own monsters that were in attack mode with it. They, uh, like Dekoichi, would go down to 700, he wouldn't get hit, he'd get blasted by something really big, it would hurt a lot, but then he goes back up to his normal and the attack gain from Heavy Metal Raiders is now even bigger. It hurts, but at the same time, you could easily turn Dekoichi from, let's just say, a 16, let's just say a 1600 beaters coming over to go smack his face in. Well, you drop him down to 700. Well, now you just took um, 1100 points of damage, which when he goes back, puts him up to 2500 attack points, which is really nice. Also, it just lets you tank if you really have to tank. Trap cards now. Two kunai with chain. Because it's kunai with chain. Feel free to substitute this out for Windstorm, but I prefer kunai because I like slapping giant numbers onto my monsters. Again, personal preference. And two Dust Storm. Sweet God, do you need Dust Storm. Dust Storm is there to stop all the bad things from happening to you, like Blast Spheres detonating in your face, or Masks of the Accursed going onto your giant boss monster and making you burn to death slowly. It's horribly agonizing. You might even want to run three. I don't want to run three. Two seem to be fine to me. But those are great. You could also run Dice Foon if you wanted to just keep the gambling thing going, which is awesome. So that's it for that. Not much in there. Now we get to the side deck. This is not actually a complete side deck. This is, well, it's a mostly complete side deck. So, two Windstorms for there if you need to get really defensive. Two Warrior Eliminations because it's Amazon a sort of thing, and there's Blade Knight Control and a bunch of other stuff. So that's there. This is the firm side deck. Now the next two cards I'm going to point out, I don't actually have double copies of, I tested them a little bit in Dueling Book. Mixed results, though they're both interesting in their own right. The first one is the Golden Apples, which you can't see because of weird glaring. Now the Golden Apples is interesting because 
this will of course regain you life points. Basically, you have to be able to take the hit. So you get hit by a blue eyes, you activate this, you then get all of the 3k you just lost back, so you have to be able to take the 3k in the first place, and then you get a giant token. Now this is nice as a recovery option, it's not my preferred one, but it does give you a giant beat stick on the board, so that's something. It's not a lot of something, but it's something. So take this for what it's worth. This is not my high recommendation. I put it in here solely because it is a recommendation. Because it's not a terrible trap card. This is the one I actually had the most fun with. This is Sebek's Blessing. As far as I'm aware, nobody has experimented with this card. There's a good reason for that, because it's just a quick play that if your monster inflicts battle damage to your opponent by a direct attack, gain the same amount of life points. Now, why do you want this? Well, let's just put a, a basic situation out here. So you got your Barrel Dragon out. So, so things are going okay. You've got your Barrel Dragon out. You've probably taken a hit or something at this point, depending on the particular deck you're uh, playing against. They may have gotten through your Blast Sphere or something or whatever. It, it's not going uh, super amazing or anything, but you have your Barrel Dragon out now. But you probably hemorrhaged some life points. So Barrel Dragon uses its effect, blows up a card. You then attack directly. You then pop this because that gets you some of the life points you've been hemorrhaging back and forth because you may or may not have been doing weird half-shut shenanigans in order to boost your monster to an appropriate level. That's the thing about this deck. Because um, I played this, I played the 40 card version of this, the non-speed duels version of Heavy Metal Raiders. I absolutely adore that deck, which is why I had to recreate it in uh, speed duels to the best of my ability. Still not great, we need some more Dark Machines, but it's doing okay. Basically, you play life point management. It's like you're freaking aroma uh, arrow mages or something. It's weird. So Sebek's Blessing is a way for you to gain some life points back that you may have lost. Now there's other options you can pick. You could, of course, go with something like security orbs. You could put another dust tornado in there if you wanted. Because, like I said, this is only a four card extra deck, right? Or extra deck, side deck at the moment. You've got options in here. You can put other things. You could put some equip spells. You could put break draw in there. I didn't like break draw. It didn't seem to work real great, so I ditched it, because screw that crap. You could put Wicked Breaking Flamber's Bow in here. You have enough draw power. Trust me, you got lots of draw power. Wicked Breaking Flamber is actually pretty decent in here if you want. I found some fairly decent use out of Sebex Blessing. I didn't actually test Wicked Breaking Flamber's, but honestly. It negates effects during battle. This deck loves battling things. Why not? Right? It stops Yomi's ship from going up. The only thing it's not going to stop is Blast Sphere, because that goes off when it flips over, because you don't forget the chance to blow it up. But this deck works okay. Uh, it's not amazing. You could, now to point out alternate skills, you could use Spellproof Armor. Eh. That's kind of my opinion of Spellproof Armor. Eh, it makes you immune to getting hit by spells on your turn, so... Neat. And not a whole lot. I mean, it'll stop you from being half-shuttered. Ooh, I'm not terribly concerned about being half-shuttered, frankly. But... I enjoyed playing the deck. I thought it was fun. I thought it worked reasonably well. Uh, you can, of course, screw with the ratios a little bit yourself here. This is definitely a deck that's Still in the midst of testing. I'm still messing around with it. It's definitely something that I need to keep looking at because it is an oddball of a deck. It has a lot of potential because that's actually a really good scale because you can recover from the drawing issue with Dekoichi or Crystal Seer. So that's not a huge problem. The issue is, is we just don't have enough toys to play with it yet. We don't have Mechanical Chaser. We don't have any of the other nice machines. Like, we don't have Dead Scissors. Or Dramago. Wish we had Dead Scissors. That would be awesome. Dead Scissors would be amazing. We're never going to get into that. That would make Burn way too good. <laughs> but. So, I hope you enjoyed this deck. I enjoyed playing it. And as always, remember to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment below. Peace out, everybody.